My name is Brother Samuel. Uh, this is a day in my life. Yesterday we got a break from the fasting of Lent to celebrate the passing of St. Benedict as a high solemnity. Uh, we had uh, solemn vespers in the evening with a uh, big buffet dinner with guests of the various monks come to help us celebrate. On the weekdays, morning starts at 5 a.m. when the buzzer, first buzzer goes off. Uh, morning prayer is at uh, 5.20. We gather in the chapel to sing uh, the Office of Readings and Laths, um, which we do combined. After that, there's an hour and a half break um, before Mass, which uh, some people use to eat breakfast, um, others use it to take a nap. <laughs> I'm one of those. I'm not a morning person. Um, uh, mass is at uh, 7.30, we uh, gather in the, uh, outside the sacristy around 7.25 um, to get ready to process in, um, and then process in for Mass. <laughs> what else, what else are you going to go? Um, the presider rotates through the various members of the community who are ordained as priests. One of the members of the community who is not ordained to the priesthood assists at the Mass as either a acolyte or deacon, depending on whether or not they're ordained to the diaconate. Since I'm ordained to the diaconate, at least for the next few months, I continue to do that. After Mass, those of us who didn't eat earlier go and have breakfast, then begins the work day, which varies from person to person. For myself, uh, I'm still in, I'm finishing up seminary this year, so I spend a lot of my work day over at the Catholic University. Um, on days when I don't go to the university, I do chores around the monastery, um, but they take a variety of forms. Um, one of the things that I do regularly is I make the sanctuary lamps for the community and for the school. Um, and so that involves um, cleaning wax because we recycle as many, can as many candle stubs as we can get our hands on. Um, and so that wax has to be filtered out and cleaned so it can be reused. Melting down the wax, filling the jars, that sort of thing. So we get enough of them. Um, for those who are on the monastery grounds, uh, midday prayer is at 12.05. After that, most of the community heads in for lunch. Then the afternoon work begins. You know, the disadvantage of being the youngest member of a community of, a community of old guys is that you want, you know technology and they don't. <laughs> so you know, it's like my computer doesn't work. What is that? Okay, I'll take a look. For some of the older monks who uh, teach in uh, teach in the school, um, they spend a lot of their days down at the school doing, I guess, what you might call typical things that a te teacher or administrator does, um, standing in front of the classroom, uh, lecturing to students, answering questions, giving tests, grading them, that sort of thing. Uh, Vespers is in the evening around uh, 6 p.m. Well, not around 6 p.m., at 6 p.m. And Vespers is always sung, uh, so we go through the, the psalms there. After Vespers, we have uh, dinner. Um, the evening meal is uh, a formal meal during the week, and so we, uh, we sit in silence uh, by order of seniority um, with a uh, table greeting. After dinner, the um, community helps clean up, um, put away the dishes and the food, And then we head to the Califactory for uh, recreation, kind of a chance to chit chat with each other, catch up on what's happened in different people's days. Um, some of us work on a puzzle sometimes, um, other times we just sit around and talk. Um, at 7.30 we have Compline, um, so we're back in the church again. And when Compline's over, around 7.45ish, head off to our rooms 
some to go to bed and some to do homework <laughs> because we're students. Every Saturday night in place of the Marian Antiphon, we have a procession through the cloister while we sing a Marian Litany. Um, it's one of the ways in which we pray for uh, vocations here for the monastery. members of the community who also work outside of the school uh, as chaplains and the like. In, in addition to community prayer, um, monks also spend time each day um, praying privately um, in, our, uh, in our community that takes two forms. We have uh, Lexio Divina um, when the monk spends time reading uh, something that is spiritually edifying. Um, the other half of private prayer is, uh, is well, private prayer. <laughs> it doesn't have its own name anymore. Um, you know, the individual just spends uh, time quietly praying for whatever intentions they have for themselves or for people who have asked them to pray for them. The community's limits, the community schedule, make it so that you, your your life doesn't get out of balance. You know, because you have that community responsibilities, those community elements, everything kind of stays on a relatively even key and helps you keep a balance between those times when you want to be alone and those times when you really ought to be interacting. I'm one of those unusual people who have known since they were four years old that they had a religious vocation. Um, you know, growing up it was always, I'm going to be a priest when I grow up, and it wasn't anything that ever changed for me. Um, when I went away to college, um, I kind of studied what I wanted to in order to kind of just see where my interests lie. Um, and I found that I really liked studying physics um, and enjoyed academic life and so I was like okay how do I put together a religious life and academic life and having gone to a Benedict high school our high school um, being a Benedictine seemed like kind of a natural fit for that and so I um, read the uh, rule of St. Benedict and found it just kind of spoke to me as I, I could see myself in this rule. I could see myself living according to that rule for the rest of my life. Um, and so I kind of knew at that point, without a doubt, that my religious vocation was a Benedictine vocation. Um, in graduate school, as I'm working on my PhD, I kind of um, started, you know, got it, as I was getting close to finishing, I started thinking about where would I go. Um, and so I actually applied to a different monastery to St. Anselm in Manchester, um, where I've got family connections. Um, both my parents graduated from their college. Um, my mom's cousin and her uncle are both monks in that community. Um, and so I applied there first, and they turned me down, um, which was rather disappointing, because I like New England weather. I don't so much like Washington, D.C. weather. <laughs> um, but I came back to Washington, D.C., um, after I, I, you know, it's one of those where I had finished my PhD, but I didn't have a job lined up because I was joining a monastery. And there I was not joining that monastery. I thought I was joining. So I came down to Washington, D.C., moved back in with my parents, um, got a job teaching at the University of Maryland for a year, um, made a few visits here during the course of that year, and kind of came to the conclusion that I wasn't quite sure that this was the right place, but I would 
regret it if I didn't try it out. And so I just kind of took a blind leap of faith, so to speak. And you know, that was almost seven years ago now. And here I am, fully present fest and preparing for ordination in, in a couple of months. So it, it worked out. So my advice for someone discerning a vocation um, is to start by taking time to listen to God, you know, spending time in prayer um, privately is, is, is an important way of first thinking it, but then also talking to other people um, about what you're thinking and what your experiences in prayer are. The last thing is don't expect a perfect solution to fall into your lap. Sometimes you just have to jump at something and rely on the fact that if it's wrong, God will smack you upside the head. You know, sometimes you just have to go for it, even when you're not entirely sure. I can honestly say I've never been happier in my life than what I am right now. It's, you know, I wasn't sure when I entered, but this has turned out to be the perfect place for me. You know, it's one of those where I got where I am despite myself. Um, God certainly knew what was going on even when I didn't. And, it, uh, you know, it's, it, it's been that way throughout several times in my life. And so, you know, finding the strength to let God handle things and not have to be, oh, wait, I'm gonna do this, and then that, and then this. <laughs> and, um, kind of thing is, I don't know, what do you want me to do? Is, is it always a challenge for me? But, um, but you know, in those moments where I do let manage to let go, you know, and God gives me exactly what I need 